the Clippers are now gauging the trade interest <clears throat> in PG-13, Paul George himself. Mark you don't Stein, say. <laughs> Mark okay. Stein is reporting that league sources tell him that the Clippers have left various rival teams with the impression through their draft week conversations that they are at a minimum attempting to gauge Paul George's trade value and to hear some describe it, giving real consideration to disassembling the Kawhi Leonard, Paul George tandem. Oh, okay. We're disassembling it. So it sounds like it was a failure. That's what you're telling me. (laughs) It sounds like it didn't work. That's what I'm hearing. And listen, from a Lakers fan, I've heard the most ridiculous, like, I've heard the most ridiculous things when it comes to comparing the LeBron AD tenure with the Lakers and the Kawhi Paul George tenure with the Lakers. I've heard Anthony Davis cannot play. I heard he's a street. They call him street clothes. Day to Davis. Day to Davis. Anthony Day to Davis. Meanwhile, Kawhi is not playing. Paul George is podcasting. He's like us out here. <laughs> Granted, great podcast, by the way. Like, Paul George's podcast is, is one of the best player podcasts. He, yeah, I'll give him some credit. That podcast is very, very good. I'll yeah. give him that. He might have to do that full time because he can't play basketball. <laughs> He's not going to be on the court. So he might have to be a podcaster full time. But listen, I've heard that the Lakers. LeBron years have been a fi- I've heard failure and I've heard that all, all the Clippers gotta do is get healthy when they're healthy they're a top team in the West I've heard all they gotta do is get healthy old time the Lakers won a championship and the Clippers cannot have their two guys healthy and when they did they blew a 3-1 lead that's all I'm gonna say that's all I'm saying but uh, yeah Lakers fan aside I'm just looking at this from what the Clippers should do it has been a failure. The Kawhi Paul George experiment has not worked out. They at this point, certain teams when they're injured or when they their stars get injured, it is more like a dang, well, like that's just bad luck. Like for the Clippers, mm-hmm. it is a certainty. They will get injured. Like one of the two will break down. And it's it's a lot of times it's not even like a little nagging injury that you can play through. Like Kawhi, he'll be he'll drop 35 points and then you'll just get a report the next day he just tore his ACL. Like, what? Like, not no, you won't even see it happen. Yeah. You'll just get a report like, yeah, Kawhi just tore his ACL or something crazy like that, like mm-hmm. spraying meniscus, something, something. So Kawhi's knees can't hold up. Paul George seems like he's always going to break down. So it has not been a success. And unfortunately for them, they've had great, great rosters. They've had title-winning type of rosters. Like, they've had – quality role players great depth they've had one of the best one of the best coaches in the league so it is unfortunate for them but it has been a failure like at at some point you have to look at breaking up these two because they just can't stay healthy yeah and it's it's oh it's a failure solely because when you put that type of talent together you like you're trying to contend for titles and that just did not happen. Didn't make the mm-hmm. finals. Talent was there. I think I would say both of us probably could agree. If they were able to stay healthy, they would have made it out of the West one of these years. One of the, they had it was only a matter if they were healthy every single year. Yeah, it was like they were gonna. They have might have time. a championship by now. Like they, even well, this they season, might. even this season, I was like going into the playoffs. I'm like if they can just get PG back. This is a mm-hmm. scary Clippers team. Yeah. They just couldn't get Paul George back. They, I feel like they could have beat the Suns if Kawhi never got hurt, let alone I, I Paul agree. George. And then if Paul George comes back, Nugget Series, who knows? Who knows, right. Who knows? Because if you're going to talk about a team constructed to disrupt the two-man game the way oh Miami was able to, yeah. you have two great perimeter defenders, mm-hmm. bodies, big bodies to be able to rotate through, like – they have options there. So I, I think had they been able to stay healthy, um, they would have been able to make some noise. But again, like you said, it has to get viewed as a failure because, you know, whether it was – it's no one's fault, really. It's just unfortunate. But, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes that's just the way that the cookie crumbles, you know. But yeah. um, part of this seems like it probably has a lot to do with the CBA. The Clippers had the biggest payroll – um, in the NBA last season, 
um, and again, are going to be, I think, probably top three or top five in terms of, of salary cap, which means they're going to be over that second tax apron for the second year in a row. Um, we touched on how the new CBA, you know, if you're above that, you know, second tax level, um, the, the penalties that you face are significantly more harsh than they were previously, limits you from being able to even utilize the mid-level exception, um, really hinders your ability to, um, you know, construct out a roster and be super top heavy with, you know, lots of big contracts on the books. Um, so that I feel like ties into it in addition to obviously just the fact that they haven't been able to stay healthy between the two of them. Um, and to your point, like you said, you think that this Clippers team might have beaten the Suns if they could have just had Kawhi. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they're reaching the point where it's like, look, maybe we can get, you know, couple other guys in here and if we just have Kawhi that might just be enough we saw what he did in Toronto granted yeah injuries in that final series to Kevin Durant helped that out and, and Clay Thompson as well but at the end of the day two-time finals MVP was able to go one year in Toronto and got the job done because he stayed healthy the whole time if he's able to do that again who knows um that might be something that the Clippers are willing to bet on here. Um, so I'm interested to see how this plays out. I think it's probably the right move to break this duo up. I think that it has run its course. Just when you have this many times in a row where the two of them are getting hurt, and even I think one of the times that they were healthy, they got beat by Luca in the bubble. Mm -hmm. um, it just – it feels like it's it's time. Like you've given it multiple multiple opportunities. You built out the roster around them various different ways. It just it didn't work out. Hey man, uh, they they beat the Lakers eleven straight times though, so they're happy. They're good. That that's their championship. <laughs> I need that's really a crazy stat though. That is like ridiculous. I'm not listen. I listen. I can be honest. They, be, they kill us every time they play us. We, <laughs> we can't beat them guys, but it's never going to matter because they're never going to be healthy. So it, it literally does not matter. But, it, like, I was looking at something, though. If if they're serious about wanting to build a team around Damian Lillard, I think a Paul George trade is very, very, mm -hmm. very interesting. Like I agree. I mean – Apparently they're talking about moving off the number three overall pick. If they, I, I, I still, I think we're both in agreement that I would just move Dame and just yeah. go in the direction of drafting Scoot and going from there. But if they really want to contend, I think a Paul George trade is very, very interesting. It gives Demi a little bit of second guy. If they can somehow find a way, like you said, to get a Paul George, and then if Draymond really isn't going to come back to Warriors, add a guy like Draymond. I think that that team. I'm intrigued. Really, I very, very, very intrigued. I would love that team a lot. Yeah. And you have Damian Lillard, Paul George, Draymond Green. I think that that that's a uh, that I don't that doesn't put them past the uh, Nuggets. Obviously, at this point, I'm not even gonna start. I'm not even gonna talk about the Nuggets. I feel like they're just in a class by themselves. They they are entering a, a contention conversation. Like that is a legitimate Western Conference threat. That's right. all that matters. Just get to mm -hmm. that point because y'all right. are not there right now. Yeah, I, I like that team a lot. I, I'm going to keep saying it because that's what they need. Miami, that's a great team. That's a great yeah. – I feel like that's a great fit. You're not losing defense either. Paul George is still going to give you defense, but he doesn't even have to be the best defender on the team. He doesn't have to guard the best uh, the best perimeter friend, the best perimeter player on the other team and still give you a lot of elite-level scoring. So I think Orland, that'd be nice. Miami – That'd be nice. I think I love those two, those two fits the most, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so interested to see how that's all gonna play out. Um, but PG 13 might be on the move. <sighs> interesting, interesting, interesting stuff, man. This is like you said, it's one of the most exciting times because it's just so many rumors yeah, swirling man. around all the time. 